Welcome to The Detail. I'm your host, Kathy Antunes, and you are listening to The Detail on WSLR 96.5 LPFM in Sarasota, Florida. We are talking today with Julie London Ferguson, who writes the uh, blog called Dear Bubby on Substack. She's recently written about what's going on with Sarasota County School Board, as have I on my blog, thedetail.net. Uh, we were both in attendance last night at the school board meeting where the school board passed a resolution requesting Bridget Ziegler to resign. So we're going to talk about that meeting, what happened, and what the future may look like for the Sarasota County School Board. So Julie London Ferguson, thank you so much for, for joining me. Thank you for having me. And yes, I'm so glad we're discussing this because so many people thought that the resolution meant that Bridget Ziegler had resigned, but indeed it was not the case. Right. No, it was not the case. Um, and so actually, you know, the first thing I do want to get to some video from the school board meeting last night, we really don't have a mechanism to remove a school board member. Contrary to what um, people might think, right? There's a lot of stuff about local politics and the law and the rules that are kind of surprising. But in this situation, and we should talk just in case, in case people don't know, um, but I think most people have heard by now, the Zigglers are a prominent um, Republican couple in Florida. And Christian Ziegler is the chair of the Florida GOP there, and served as a Sarasota County Commissioner. Bridget, Bridget Ziegler is a current school board member. She recently uh, passed the baton as chair to Karen Rose. And Bridget Ziegler is the co-founder of Moms for Liberty. And there's a recent accusation against Mr. Ziegler um, involving a sexual assault accusation that investigation revealed details um, about a um, consensual- Menage Right, menage a trois, right. And so everybody, I gave a disclaimer this, we're probably not gonna talk too much about that, but uh, this may be something for the archive if you have kids listening to, to go right. and listen to. And the opinions are purely mine and yours, Julie. They're not necessarily the opinions of WSLR its supporters or its staff. So Bridget Ziegler's political talk has been very loud with regard to don't don't say gay uh, legislation, which she claims to have had a hand in creating um, anti-critical race theory, which, you know, most of us think uh, this wasn't even taught in school. No. Yeah. So there's been a real concern that her private conduct has been um, one way, and then her public political uh, activity, they're not consistent. Her public political talk has been very painful for a lot of people and the policies. So we're, we're going to get to all that. But let, let's start out, because last night, Karen Rose was going to uh, introduce a resolution asking for Bridget Ziegler's voluntary resig resignation. Okay. And so this is the discussion around that. Um, so we will start by listening a bit to the meeting. The, um, I'm going to reinforce that this is not legally binding. It is non-binding. It is me as the chair of this board uh, holding myself accountable to our students in this community and instruction and learning. Um, it's also my understanding through legal counsel that as chair, I can make the motion and I'm going to proceed uh, to uh, make the motion uh, to adopt this uh, resolution as read by uh, legal counsel, uh, Patrick Duggan, and uh, ask if there is a second. If there isn't, I fully understand. This is something I've chosen to do individually, 
Uh, if there is, that is up to uh, a, any individual board member. Um, so I will ask if there is a second and then proceed to comments. So they're waiting for a second for the resolution, the motion for Ziegler to resign. Hearing none, I'd like to refer to uh, comments, please. Uh, I see uh, Bridget Ziegler, um, please. Well, seeing that the resolution was not moved forward, I will withhold my comments. I had my button. There's actually, I had, I had my. I'm sorry, it didn't show up. Mrs. Marinelli. So this, you're asking for a, a second? I'm asking uh, for a, a second, um, if one exists. If it doesn't, that is fine as well. I second. Uh, please, please, please. This is challenging and difficult. And I ask you to be as respectful as possible. Um, there may not be students here, but our students are looking at how we behave uh, and how we articulate our messages. So I ask you to please be as respectful as possible. Um, and I see that uh, there is a motion and there is a second. Um, and I will, I see Mr. Edwards would like to comment, but I'm going to refer back to Mrs. Ziegler who, um, has an opportunity had an opportunity to speak first. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, I am disappointed. Uh, as people may know, I serve on another public board, and uh, this issue did not come up, and we were able to forge ahead with the business of the board. Um, I have two questions. Um, if I may direct one to Mr. Uh, Superintendent Connor. Um, recently, we did discuss when I was chair about potential resolutions that had come forward, um, and you had done a little bit of due diligence in the past as what has taken place in Sarasota uh, County. I, I believe it was something of the sort of maybe six to eight resolutions had been brought forward over the course of 20 years. Is that about accurate? Uh, it was five years. Five years, okay. And many of which were of a political nature. And I bring that up is because that was the intent to remove that and not proceed forward. And then let me ask Mr. Duggan, um, just to reiterate, I know the chair did mention this, but just one more time, this does not have any teeth. Is that correct? This board has no ability to uh, remove one of the other members. Thank you. Uh, well, I'd like to move to call the question. Uh, Mr. Edwards, please. Madam Chair, I, I call the question. Uh, uh, Mr. Edwards uh, has the uh, right to comment prior to. Mr. Edwards, please. Point of order. So I, I called the question. If, if there's a second, that would be the procedure, but that's the another motion now on the floor. Mr. Edwards, please. Mr. Duggan. I don't think your mic is on. I'm asking Mr. Duggan how to proceed. I want to make sure we follow protocol. protocol so if if miss Ziegler is calling uh, the question is there a second to that is there a second to mrs Ziegler calling the question hearing none um mr edwards thank you um so what we were just listening to is karen rose introduced a resolution asking for her voluntary resignation Bridget Ziegler brought up prior resolutions for other situations, though she didn't specify what they were. Uh, and, and there have been other resolutions asking for resignations in Sarasota County. And then because she asked if it had any teeth, in other words, can it be enforced? And the answer is no. So she called the question, which means can they even vote on it, right? She wanted it to just be set aside since it's not enforceable. Thank you for explaining that because I didn't understand that at all. Yeah, so she was calling the question, in other words, you know, this- Do we even have to do this because it has no teeth? Exactly, right. And she needed a second to call the question and she didn't get one. So <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, right. Um, yeah, and so then Tom Edwards uh, went on to soften the language in the resolution 
in a way that he feels made it less personal um, than it was. I don't think it was is hardly hardly personal. But we're talking about you know this this um, police investigation and it it got into intimate behaviors that are not consistent with Mrs. Ziegler's public persona. Bottom line. I will say this, Kathy. I believe that the board members did want to cross their T's and dot their I's. They didn't want to do any kind of misstep that the Ziegler's could come back at them for. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that they had the lawyer there to answer all the questions. Yeah. But I was fully aware. Um, and I had already written to the governor because I did look up to see can can she be removed from from her position? And that's when I learned, no, she couldn't be. But somebody brought up a great question. Mm -hmm. Can she be censured? Do you yeah. know? <laughs> I don't know. I see this sort of thing. I mean, this is the school board, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that's been so um, unprecedented in local politics uh, and, you know, that the, the Ziegler's created an organization, Moms for Liberty, and uh, Christian Ziegler's company, Micro-Targeted Media, has been paid uh, money to do work right. for Moms for Liberty. I would say that the, the prior organization that uh, Bridget Ziegler, Erica Donalds, who's not on the board of Moms for Liberty, but is tight with uh, Tiffany Justice and Tina Deskovich. They were all part of the Florida Florida Coalition of School Board Members, and they were pro-voucher, pro-privatization, and that really didn't take off. They were trying to compete with the Florida School Board Association, never, never really took off. They folded that organization in the spring of 2020, and then in December of 2020 created Moms for Liberty. So that focus and and spreading nationally, right, to school board races and fomenting discontent around how public education functions. Betsy DeVos is a, a funder yeah. of like Hillsdale College and these curriculums, uh, the classical curriculums, that's where the older uh, Ziegler girls go to school, they don't go to public school. But you've seen this push on their part to, to elevate school board races and bring in a, a brand of politics we've seen. I've seen it ever since I've been watching Sarasota politics. This really public officials that don't care about citizen input they're, they're I wonder how did Moms for Liberty get so powerful? Um, is it the moms? Note that they don't say Mothers for Liberty. Um, Casey DeSantis recently had Mamas for DeSantis. Is she trying to empower all the women who feel powerless and now they yeah. feel like they belong to a group and this is and they're strong? You know, they can have an opinion that is greater than that of trained educators, trained librarians. They are eating up the power and loving it. Yeah, you know, I, I would say that when I gave talks about local dark money um, and I spoke about myself saying, you know, what got me involved in local politics was um, a professional baseball team wanted to come and wanted to be funded publicly, right? Spring training in, in Florida. Uh, but but part of the deal they wanted was going to take children off of their little league fields. They wanted to appropriate some of those uh, ball fields. And I was like, over my dead body, you're not taking them. My, my son had played on those fields. So I said, what is the most vicious animal in the animal kingdom? And people were like, hmm, I said, it's a mother protecting her young. Okay. So I think that idea is the idea behind Moms for Liberty in terms of what okay. I've observed, my opinion, is that especially with uh, Christian Ziegler, and you can see his Twitter feed, agitating and upsetting people is a way to get them to vote. Never mind, right. not 
the agitation is justified or actually accurate. Just get people worked up and like CRT. I'm, you know, like CRT is not taught in public schools. It's not, that didn't matter. They just message something to get everybody riled up. Um, but yeah, Moms for Liberty, you know, there's word that it's got funding and backing from the Heritage Foundation. It didn't, it doesn't appear to have sprung up organically, right? That Let me um, add to what you said um, about people getting out the vote. They also say that fear and bigotry, fear and hate mm -hmm. also gets more people to vote, but it's the yes. fear. So mm -hmm. sure enough, Moms for Liberty is making people fearful. So if you want to protect your child, you have to be with us. Fear brings out more votes than logic. It's emotion. And so, you know, Julie, one of the things I want to play your input from last night, because I think you got you got the biggest laugh in the room. Mrs. London, please. Hi, I'm Julie London, and I head up the Dare Bubby Substack blog. I also already wrote to Governor DeSantis, and I'm sure a lot of us are as well. At a school board meeting I attended, Tim Eno stated, leave the past in the past. In case you haven't noticed, we don't. If it hurts our community, our people, our surroundings, and especially our kids, we're not going to stop or forget until the problem is rectified. As I yelled in Tom Edwards' air before another contentious school board meeting, this is our Sarasota. Scandals come and go. I won't name names, but I met up with a kid who is now a lawyer who was ejected from a TV show for using the N-word. That's all I could think about. A woman who is married to a man who did a Ponzi scheme often posts in the next door app. Even with a name change, that's her. Bridget Ziegler called Sarasota's voice as a distraction. She never had that Nancy Dietert motivation that the citizens are her boss. It's easy to get it when you're loved like Tom. It's a lot harder for Robin Marinelli, who doesn't get us all the time, but she is up there listening and thank you for that. And you're learning like we all should. She's not laughing at this hypocrisy and time wasted at the hands of Bridget and neither should we. I know Bridget is experiencing teeth chattering fear, even though this is at her own hand, but also at her hand are the same trauma and sleepless nights of Sarasota's LGBTQ and minority community. Kids can't process the stigmatization like we as adults barely can ourselves. She's getting a taste of her own medicine. In her election speech, Ziegler said, we as public servants on that board are there to serve the public. It's never okay to disregard any of our citizens, whatever their issues are, even if it's something you as an elected official don't particularly agree with. There is not a person in this room who can believe that she has lived up to those words. She is Sarasota's George Santos. She turned our town into a laughing stock. If Bridget really did listen and did care, she would resign on her own volition. Her credibility was low to start with, now there's none. A resignation reflects the community's need to move forward in the best interest of the students. After all, this is our Sarasota and we don't forget. And we also can all write to the governor. Thank you. Thank you, Julie London. All right. So, you know, at the time I didn't see that as an insult. It's just the truth. You mean the George Santos part? Yeah. Um, her hearts on her t-shirts, uh, the whole persona mm -hmm. is one of hate and she, the, her persona is one of love, but she really represents hate. So what she was pushing, you know, it's well, a shame. I think so maybe you're referencing her logo in her last election was like right. pink with white flowers and I'm a mom and okay. And an action and hearts, yeah. <laughs> and hearts and stuff like that. Um, 
but there are a lot of moms um, out there and there are moms of uh, students who have been hurt by this don't say gay anti-CRT um, effort. And, and they spoke last night too, you know? And I was I, so grateful for that. Yeah. And I think that the thing, the thing about this, because there was, there was a lot of um, reference to a particular biblical passage, John, and I forget, you know, the Jesus and, and the um, woman who's brought in front of him where the crowd wants to stone her because she's committed adultery. And Jesus writes in the sand, he's quiet. And then he stands up and he says, who among, let the, those among you who are without sin uh, cast the first stone. And everyone starts leaving. And, and the, of course the point is, you know, we're all human. What I found and, you know, I have a master's in theology, so these things are uh, divinities. So these things, um, and it, and it is a painful thing for everybody. I know that the her, you know, Mrs. Ziegler and her family. This can't be easy, right? This is painful. How when I said that somebody said she was a sociopath, I was thinking, no matter what what label you put on her. She was scared when this, when you know well, this stuff is going to come out. The people they're using it to protect her, which I don't think being asked to step down from a job that you've messed up, you know, is akin to being stoned. Okay. That's, that's number okay. one. We're just asking you to stop this particular job. Yeah. People are upset with you. Number one, but number two, this attitude on the part of the GOP and those putting forward the don't say gay, they don't right. seem to think they're throwing stones at, at gay people or bisexual people, or queer people. They don't see themselves as throwing stones. And there was a another speaker who said, you know, there's another passage where Jesus says, take the log out of your own eye before you take the splinter out of your neighbor's eyes. Same thing. We all, we all need to mind our own issues and problems and, and things like that. I don't see that introspection. And I certainly don't see um, any, like the dignity and kindness that we all want to experience in our lives. And certainly all children at school have a right to expect dignity and kindness. And it's incredibly tone deaf for those who were invoking that passage to defend Bridget Ziegler and, and Mrs. Ziegler herself with this never apologize attitude that they have. They just don't seem to want to acknowledge or accept the, the pain that, that their stone throwing has done toward, toward other people. What, I'm, this is I'm exactly just what I wanted to ask you, Kathy. Do you think that the people who were saying that the blood is on her hands and it was person after person, do you think any of it sunk in what she has done to the LBGBT community? Has any of it sunk in? Or do you think she was just imagining us all naked and not listening to what we were saying? I don't know. I mean, it, you know, I don't know. I don't know what she feels. I don't know. I, You're I, the theology oh. person. Um, and I am the, and I really love to try to get inside of people's heads. What makes them tick? What in the world, what person could sit through all the vitriol, the deserved vitriol that she was getting and the information and not have a compelling feeling to apologize or resign what yeah. i just really I wonder what you think i can't account for that obviously it's <laughs> um yeah and i frankly thought that with the disagreement in the room there still was pretty good decorum and respect the first person who gave public input was martin hyde and um he ran for congress he he was very um, protective 
of Mrs. Ziegler gave her credit for showing up. And he said, you know, this is a mother of three children. Basically, be nice to her. She's a mother of three children. You shouldn't be upset. And, you know, Julie, one of the things I, I find is that this idea of not throwing stones, oh, you can't criticize. Well, you know, there's a difference between saying, hey, this behavior doesn't work for a public official and you need to leave versus you're a bad person. I mean, we all mess up, but we need to be able to hold the public officials accountable. So if you're going to take issue with the, with people being upset about these things, what is what does accountability look like, right? If and so, you know, to say, oh, she has three kids, I'm like, okay, you know, but that doesn't mean she's not accountable. Right. The it, same speaker who you mentioned um, about the log in the eye and the speck in the eye. Mm -hmm. um, he's a philosopher. I, I thought he was outstanding. And I mentioned him in a letter I just finished writing to the board members of Sarasota, mm -hmm. um, stating that we were allowed to bring up her personal life because of what he said, that leaders are looked up to by kids, maybe you know, they they don't look up to all adults the same, but a leader, yes, a leader is influential. So if a leader is hypocritical, they will grow up to be untrusting, cynical, and maybe even hypocrites themselves. Therefore, her private life, her actions does affect the students. Boy, yeah. I thought he nailed it. Yeah, yeah, he did a great job. It was interesting, too, because as I, you know, getting back to Martin Hyde, when I was listening to Martin's input, I was recalling an article and then I found the article. It was in Sarasota magazine <laughs> just about a year ago. And this is what uh, Martin Hyde had to say about Bridget Ziegler. And I'm just reading even fellow conservative Bridget Ziegler, wife of Sarasota County Commissioner and Trump acolyte Christian Ziegler wasn't safe from Martin Hyde's opinions. Quote, she doesn't believe in anything, Hyde told me. She'll say anything to move up. She hasn't got a single conviction, unquote. And then he paused. I know that's ironic coming from me. And Ziegler did not respond to a re request for comment. So it seems to me that Martin Hyde understands that a lot of this posturing and ugly rhetoric that both Ziegler's embrace um, but we're talking about Bridget here. You know, he said before she doesn't have any convictions that this is all for her advancement. So it was kind of amazing to me sitting there last night and listening to him talk. It just two two entirely different attitudes. I wonder about her future since she was maybe forced to resign from the Leadership Institute. What is her future? Why is she hanging on? Does she really think she has a future? I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. And I guess the bigger question um, is what happens now, right? What happens in Sarasota County? Um, what, how do we navigate? Obviously there's an investigation and that's going to play out, but you Kathy, know. will she always have the stigma attached to her? And that was kind of the point I wanted to make in my speech that sometimes when somebody does something wrong or they're even accused of something wrong, it's always there. Wouldn't she always be in a distraction? I even brought up um, Bridget to, to a visitor at my house this morning and she didn't know who she was until then she said, oh, the Sarasota School Board. And so that's what the school board is going to be associated with as long as she stays with them. And whenever mm -hmm. anybody sees her, aren't we going to be thinking of that rather than, you know, too bad she doesn't have any accomplishments that we can think about, but she really doesn't. It's, you know, the, the tenure, her tenure has um, been marked by a number of situations. One um, 
Todd Bowden, who was a superintendent, and and he was fired for I think le legitimate reasons regarding how an employee's um, sexual harassment situation was handled. Okay. It was brushed under the rug. However, um, Mr. Bowden, in during before that happened, and and this was when Bridget Ziegler and Eric Robinson were kind of both on the board together, and they often voted as a block. Um, he got a threatening letter, and it was over transgender bathrooms, you know, and the policy in the school about um, how to handle transgender bathroom situation. And Mrs. Ziegler, uh, it was a donor of hers, somebody who donated to her campaign, who wrote what Mr. Bowden interpreted. And I think any reasonable person would interpret it as potentially threatening, uh, mm -hmm. This man was like, I'll see you around and, you know, uh, what he would do if his if he had a daughter then. And these are fiery type issues. Um, but what Todd Bowden basically said was, I see clearly now that uh, it's all about politics for you. You're going to protect your donors when as a school board member, you should be more concerned about the safety of staff and students. And, you know, in other words, if, if somebody is threatening us, that ought to matter to you, but apparently it doesn't. So anyway, there's a there's a long history here that's kind of like coming to fruition. I don't know, you know, what kind of efficacy she'll have on the school board. Um, I'm kind of curious too about the Moms for Liberty future. This kind of scrutiny into somebody's life, you know, we're all human, um, which is why it, it's still, I'm going to bring it back again. It's still so surprising to me, it, but it's, it's a human failing. But why don't folks see this targeting of, of LGBTQ students as throwing stones? Why don't they see it as unkind. There were many students that came to talk last night and some came from other counties to discuss. Kayak, that sweet kid Kayak who spoke about being called a different name and needing to get parental consent for that. That's crazy. I was called Pickle in high school because I played the piccolo. What about you, Kathy? Did you have a nickname? Not really? In, yeah. In well, Cannonball. My last name was Cannonball. Cannon. So I, some people would say Cannonball. But you know, well, if somebody said Cannonball, they would get in trouble, and you would need <laughs> to get parental permission. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? But this is what is going on in Florida. Well, you know. There, there are some because I come from a, a very traditional conservative Catholic family, and I understand, I really understand that parents don't want to feel like things are happening at school that they don't know about or aren't included in. And these are children at a vulnerable time in their lives where they're learning who they are, you know, and uh, I like I do, un I do understand both both angles, right? Uh, but at the same time, I don't understand the ham-fisted, nasty approach, right? Even if you disagree, these are children that we're supposed to love and care for, all of them, all of and them. What, and look what they're doing to the kids' parents who may have same-sex parents. Mm -hmm. I mean, that hurts. It does hurt. Everybody, if you're just joining us, you're listening to the detail on WSLR 96.5 LPFM in Sarasota, Florida. Programming at WSLR is supported by listeners like you and by Ringling College Galleries and Exhibitions. Ringling College's 2023-24 exhibition season features art from Ringling students, alumni, faculty, and nationally recognized artists from a wide range of mediums and from diverse backgrounds. More information is available at ringlingcollege.gallery. My guest is Julie London Ferguson. She writes the blog, Dear Bubby, and we are discussing last night's Sarasota School Board meeting where the, the board voted uh, four to one 
to request Bridget Ziegler's voluntary resignation due to revelations uncovered about her uh, personal behavior that she acknowledged in a recent, uh, in an ongoing police investigation uh, into a sexual assault accusation against Christian Ziegler. Christian Ziegler is um, also going to be the topic of a Florida GOP meeting, actually this coming meeting, he also is refusing to resign. He was, it was requested by the governor that he resign from his chairmanship of the Florida GOP. And um, Mr. Ziegler is refusing to do that. A Lee County. Mike Lee. And Mike Lee initially supported Ziegler. He said the Ziegler's have a target on their back. And then when he found out, read the arrest record or, you yeah. know, the alleged crime, then he did a total 180. Yeah. And he, he actually called there. You have your puppy there. Um, called him a, a sociopath, I believe. Or one there was a, a Florida GOP official that actually referred to him that way. And this, uh, you know, I call it a brass knuckle approach, but we're not going to admit we're not going to admit we did anything wrong. We're not going to uh, step down. We're going to keep on going. And in the clip I played at the beginning of the show, the defiance of of Bridget Ziegler, she was referring to the Disney board. She would she went to a Disney oh. at the Reedy Creek meeting. Um, I believe that's what it was. Anyway, she was not. Yes. She was not asked to resign. Uh, she appeared on zoom although with just her name she she didn't show her face so yeah the the defiance um last night was typical i guess kathy i didn't even think she was going to show up did you know she was going to show up or think she was going to show up yeah because i you know like it's i've been watching so this is just my take I've been watching Sarasota politics and have been involved um, in watchdog politics here, watchdogging politics for 15 years. Okay. And that has been my observation. You know, people think Trump unleashed this. Well, Trump came here and got awards before he ran for president. Right. right? This was already in Sarasota, this attitude, this, you know, and, and I tie it directly to the money in politics, the, the local dark money. You have candidates that get and, and hers, you know, Bridget Ziegler's uh, first school board race was the first six figure race we've seen in a, in a school board race in Sarasota uh, County. Although Ken Marsh, he raised that much money, her initial opponent. But um, the candidates that have lots of money behind them. And then you've got what I call a bobblehead Republican vote. These are people who just vote along the party line. Right. They aren't really looking at the candidate. They don't necessarily understand that, that, you know, there's a big difference between a bought candidate and then somebody who really has a, a core philosophy and some integrity and is- And qualifications. Yeah. Yeah. And looking to do public service, you know, those people, sometimes you just can't even tell what party they're in. Right. Because they're really about serving. These other candidates who know they're going to win just because of the, the electorate is not paying attention and they just rubber stamp a particular uh, party. And this could happen either way. I mean, if, if Democrats were the dominant party, you know, some of these developers operated up north and and they contribute to Democrats because that's the dominant party. So but these days and and what the Ziegler's are also part of is, you know, these elections coming up are really about keeping our democracy or keeping our republic. It's it, it is a republic. Um, a representative democracy. And Mrs. Ziegler got help from the Proud Boys when she ran. Right. And she completely denied. It was amazing to me how easily she lied. Um, 
to the press, to the Herald Tribune reporter, that they had nothing to do with the win. That's what she said. Yeah, she knows they did. And yet she quite easily said something completely false. And then with Christian Ziegler, you know, he was there on January 6th. He was stoking uh, the stop the steal lies, claiming election fraud. He took a video on January 6th that he later deleted. But, you know, he was posting on Twitter. Um, Florida has the largest number of people who've been arrested for their insurrection activities. Yes. So here's a man, you know, and a couple that's okay with this, right? With right. folks that are uh, looking to actually trash our democracy. And when, when someone's willing to do that, I think Martin Hyde was right the first time. There are no convictions here. It's just say anything to get ahead. No understanding of um, last, well, in 2022, Christian Ziegler wanted the Sarasota County Commission. So this was in February of 2022 to put hundreds of thousands of dollars into an economic development grant for Rumble. And this was going to be on Long, Rumble's on Longboat Key. And they wanted the county to just, you know, give money to Rumble. Rumble was broadcasting Putin propaganda. So my take, and then those who were protesting and you had Ukrainians talking about local you, people of Ukrainian descent who were bereft about the war right. and the impact on their families. And, and Mr. Ziegler was calling those of us there to protest this flag burners. I mean, they don't even understand, like Ronald Reagan would be on the side of Ukraine. He would be, he would not be on the side of a KGB, you know, uh, Vladimir Putin. Okay. I do remember at one of the meetings when he said, we can bring this multimedia group rumble into the schools. I think I know someone with connections. Oh yeah. Thought, oh my God. He's going to, bring try to attempt to bring Russian propaganda into the Sarasota school system. Yeah, and, and if it weren't for people like you, Kathy, people like Adrian Lucas and yeah, yeah. our sweet Save Our Schools um mm -hmm. woman, what is her name? Oh uh, Lisa Gialdini. Lisa Sher. Lisa yes. Sher. Yeah. Um if they could have gotten away with it. You know, and it was only Nancy Dieter initially who voted against it. Nancy Dieter you Go referenced ahead, her, yeah. You referenced her in, in your comment, and see, this to me is, you know, and I didn't just, I, I didn't agree with everything Nancy did, but there was a core of integrity, you know. So many times, you knew that she would be listening, and you knew she she did vote for the people, as I saw it. You know that that was her main concern. She she wasn't okay with mega hotels on Siesta Key. Uh, you know, with PACE loans, which I'm going to be talking about, uh, you know, Mike Moran's role with these um, predatory loans. I've already written about that, but Nancy Dieter didn't vote for that, you know, and we lost her this year. She was a true public servant and she was not bought, you know, in the I way was like she was not bought. Yeah, she was fearless. Um, back to the school board. Yeah. I think what is what I find really interesting was the fear that the candidates who ran with her, Zem, mm -hmm. uh, Enos, and Marinelli, when they first got rid of the superintendent, they did it out of fear. I will not forget Mrs. Marinelli firing the superintendent of the A district school, the A, A school district, and she said, "Sorry." And I thought, oh, you know, she didn't she didn't want to do it. I don't think Enos wanted to do it, but they were scared of her and scared of Christian. Scared I of wrote them a letter, scared of the power. Mm -hmm. But I wrote to them and I said, there's going to be a power shift. Don't be afraid. I didn't realize a power shift would happen months later. Or but like I this, really. Right? Yeah. 
-hmm. I really give them credit um, for still voting against Vermillion, but but Chris, but Bridget made it extremely difficult for them to vote against her. But I think once they did, then that empowered them. I think they knew for their own futures, they couldn't keep going with Bridget's agenda. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe the best thing that's going to happen from all of this, because it was very telling when uh, Karen Rose made the motion for the resolution yes. for Bridget Ziegler to resign, Tom Edwards was quiet. He did not second it. I mean, he was already out there calling for her resignation. And you could tell it was like a game of chicken, right? Who's going to... Who's okay. gonna who's going to second this? And Tom wasn't going to do it. He put Enos and Marinelli on the spot to do it. And, and Robin Marinelli did second the motion. I think there's that was, that was, a com that was compelling. You are absolutely right. And telling, but all of us in the audience, we couldn't believe it when there wasn't a second. So being there live and not hearing the second because of a technical glitch or whoever held things up, you know, that was, that was a very suspenseful moment. Yeah, I also kind of understand what was happening there was, was Tom was looking at the two of them going balls in your court, you know, I had no idea. This is why I love talking to you and why everyone should listen to your show. Okay. Everyone should read your blogs because you have the inside information. Well, that you know, that. I, that's just what I see. I did want to play one more clip. Okay. Um, there is a gentleman. His name is, I believe, Harold Young. And Perfect. he Perfect. was talking about her, the, the impact of Bridget Ziegler's um, uh, governance on, on Black history and teaching appropriate history. So let's go there and we'll hear... So my name is Harold Young. I'm first vice president of the Minnesota branch of the so Association for the Study of African American Life and History. Ms. Ziegler, you have tarnished the soul of the school board here with hypocrisy and duplicity. Mm -hmm. Sarasota County Public School students expect you to be the dean of integrity, not the personification of duplicity. Described by Robert Louis Stevenson as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Students of Sarasota want to know you, you respect the truth. Truth about the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Truth about their history. Remember, Ms. Ziegler, true black history is American history. Just like Brutus and Julius Caesar, the cut. Your cut on the black history curriculum was the most unkindest cut of all. Right. Students did not expect that you would vilify and disparage them. Students have lost trust in you. Parents have lost trust in you. The community has lost trust, trust in you. Your conduct on the school board and community is reprehensible and unacceptable. Ms. Ziegler, the school board cannot function as it should with the international media spotlighting you as having lost your way. Your activities on and off the board have caught the attention of a small town in Croatia. You are spearheading of culture wars, bigotry, and homophobia must stop. You have no options left. Right. Ms. Ziegler, you must step down. You must step down immediately. Thank you. Yeah. Um such power in the words and the silence you know the way he spoke i was just dancing in my seat 
just yeah. such eloquence. Yeah, such eloquence in speaking for uh, so many people who are offended by the the exploitation of really difficult issues in this country, right? And again, using those wounds, right? Using those wounds and inflaming those wounds for political gain. Um, you know, before the show, you had talked about how, and you gave this in your input, it, it is painful to think about, and it has to be difficult, certainly, uh, what's going on for their girls and, and for the family. But maybe there'll be some appreciation for how all of this has impacted um, other families, right? Who, who right. Can hurt uh, minority families, um, parents who have children who are, you know, coming out or realizing, you know, there there's a, an issue with their gender identity and where is the- They're so vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. These and this is why they, their, their four times is likely to commit suicide according to the Trevor Project. Mm. You know, you don't do that to the vulnerable. Right, and that was a point that was made by many speakers last night. Yes. Once again, just have to say, you know, people drove. There was a mom who said, I drove two hours to be here, Kimberly Cox, because you, you know, talking about what Mrs. Ziegler, yes. is, how it's impacted her family. Certainly, you know, the rhetoric is bullying. Um, their delivery may differ, but both Ziegler's have engaged in political bullying. And it, there's a cost to people. Real people have been hurt. So if all this situation brings home the point that being in public office, there's a responsibility to love and care for all of your constituents, yeah. that that would be a, a good thing. I any any parting thoughts about what we need, what the public needs to do next, what I don't know if it would do any good, but I would recommend that they write to the governor mm -hmm. and ask the governor why he has not asked for her resignation. It's a start. It yeah. would be nice to get somebody on the board, although who knows, you know, if for a special election, it would be nice to get somebody who really will focus on the kids instead of like what you have been saying and everybody's saying is instead of a stepping stone for her political future. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do hope that it just penetrated. I think a lot of people, it's difficult. We can't do it walking in other people's shoes and the hurt, the, the gut punch that these people feel when it's our adults. You said, talked about bullying. When it's an adult, that gives the other kids permission to act the same way. And yes. good news, Kathy, we all know how much Christian Ziegler was hated. And this is why he is not getting any support from his party. So yeah, I've been telling him that. I've been telling him that for a while, that he's not liked. He's not credible. He's not a good leader. That's what his own party has thought of him. Yeah. But his arrogance, you know. Yeah, that but, didn't carry him very far. Well, we're all we're all human, and um, it would be great to see some positive change for everybody come from this. I'm not, I'm not human. I'm perfect. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and people can check your blog out on <laughs> Substack. It's called Dear Bubby. Everybody, you have been listening to the detail on WSLR ninety six point five LPFM in Sarasota, Florida. Programming at WSLR is supported by listeners like you and by Ringling College Galleries and Exhibitions. Ringling College's 2023-24 exhibition season 
features art from Ringling students, alumni, faculty, and nationally recognized artists from a wide range of mediums and from diverse backgrounds. More information is available at ringlingcollege.gallery. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Julie, for, for Thank being- Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, and uh, please stay tuned <laughs> for great public affairs programming here on WSLR. Make it a great day.